to it at the same time. It makes it small and you can hear again the ear drum and it slips the tube. It is very precise, you do not need to use general anesthesia potentially and it can also reduce cost. After about 10 years, uh, we needed more funds to bring clicks to clinical trials. What SG Innovate did was really invaluable. They gave us a project lead, so this really helped us with the regulatory, the commercialization, manufacturing uh, aspects. And I could get additional funding with a grant from the National Research Foundation. We all felt great when the project got funded after a intense evaluation by the NRS. We first heard about Clicks to Smart, the program to bring research outcomes closer to market. Technology was interesting and potentially the market was also very big. So that's what got us interested in venture build this project into a company. Potentially My dream of course is to have clicks used all over the world and to have this help millions more people. But of course we need to play by ear. My dream of course is to have clicks used all over the world and to have this help millions more people. But of course we need to play by ear. My dream of course is to have clicks used all over the world. Mic test, mic test, one, two. Mic test.
good afternoon. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Alex. Uh, I wanted to warmly welcome you on behalf of Polish Investment and Trade Agency. Uh, just quick technical announcement to make. Uh, our guest is on his way from airport, uh, right away from Poland. Mr. Marek Kamiński should be here in uh, not more than five minutes. So please, just a few more minutes of patience and we will welcome our guests. Thank you.
water for uh, Marek, right? Water for Marek, yes. Okay. Uh, and can we you? Yes, yeah, I'll invite you on the stage. So, welcome to get on the stage and then I'll invite Marek on the stage. But I'll This is yours. Maybe you have a Oh, please. Maybe you have a Oh, I just... Yeah. Oh, I just... Maybe short short Do we have any coffee? I'll get the order to... Hi, hello everyone. Uh, thank you so much for joining us and thank you for waiting for us uh, to start. Uh, I'm very happy. I'm Jin from SG Innovate and I'm very happy to be working with the Polish Investment and Trade Agency today um, to have a very special guest all the way from Poland to join us. Um, so without further ado, I'll pass on the mic to the Polish Investment and Trade Agency from Anya. And thank you. Thank you, Jean. Um, Anya from Polish Investment Trade Agency, where we support uh, business and trade, but also we support extraordinary. And we have an extraordinary guest today, um, a World Guinness record holder for walking to North and South Pole in one year without any external support, who just landed in Singapore and who is an international pride and joy of Poland. And it's my pleasure to introduce Mr. Marek Kamiński. Hi, nice to meet you. Yes, it was just quite a long flight, like uh, 11 hours from Warsaw to Singapore. Mm, yes, so let's, let's start the, the lecture. And uh, I, I try to, to tell you about my journey from the North Pole, okay, we can start. From the North Pole and South Pole uh, to artificial intelligence and uh, to the new projects. Uh, and uh, yeah, my new project is called Power for, Power for Change. And it comes from all my experience from expedition to the, to the ends of the world. And uh, uh, my, my, po my la life of, as a polar explorer or as a uh, explorer starts very early. Uh, this is me. That's that's me. Uh, seven years old and uh, in, the, in the rubber shoes because my parents couldn't afford for a better one. Uh, and they probably they didn't know that in 20 years later this guy will be the the first man in the world who reached the North Pole and South Pole on skis without external support. When I was uh, 15 years old, I went from Poland to Morocco by ship, by cargo ship, alone without parents. And it was a quiet journey for a 15 years old boy, alone without parents. And we came to the big storm uh, uh, in the Biscaya Bay. Uh, you have, I think, in, you have here storms so, uh, as well in Singapore. But uh, it was really big storm. The, 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 uh, one of the worst since 50 years in, in this area. and. Uh, and it was a yacht race, and many, many yachts sunk, and uh, many people, many sailors die because of this big storm. So I was uh, just in the middle of this, uh, of this uh, disaster, and it was a uh, yeah, big experience for, uh, for a young person to, uh, to see how, how big is the power of the nature and how small is the human being. But uh, with my, in, my, uh, in my life, everything starts from the books. And I, I think the books created my imagination and all the knowledge. And just uh, from the books that I read uh, uh, when I was a child, like uh, in 80 days around the world, or uh, memoirs from uh, uh, Davis from Shackleton, uh, Robert Scott, or, or uh, Ronald Amundsen, or, or, um, or he, Edmund Hillary. Uh, yes, th this book created my reality, and th th after this, I wanted just my life will be like in the books. So, in my uh, in my life, I went among other journeys. I went to the North Pole and South Pole and skis. The North Pole and South Pole is the, yeah. I think the Singapore is is like mm, is somewhere here, and so the North Pole is the the farthest point in the. In the north is in Arctic, and the South Pole is uh, in Antarctica. 
So I, I went, uh, yes, to the North Pole, South Pole. I crossed also twice Greenland ice cap and skis, and uh, crossed the, uh, as the first crossed the Gibson Desert in Australia. Also twice I sailed across the Atlantic Ocean, and I went also with a uh, with disabled boy uh, who was 15 years old. Uh, she, he was 15 years old, and I went with him to the North Pole and South Pole as well. And uh, I would say that uh, with the project like expedition, so I try to mix my, because I also I I entrepreneur and I also created the company in Poland, uh, which, uh, which employs 120 people and, uh, and uh, it's quite successful. So, and I, but from the background, I am philosopher and, physic and, phys uh, yeah, and physicist. So uh, mm, with the project like expedition or uh, also in business project, it's like with the iceberg, only one the seventh of the iceberg is over the water, and the uh, six seventh is invis invisible. But uh, I think what is invisible, like the preparation, know-how, uh, uh, mm, experience, uh, technology, every, uh, planning, <laughs> like Eisenhower said that uh, the plan is nothing, planning is everything. So the planning, this, this uh, period when you plan the expedition and uh, when you hire the team or you manage yeah, the, the project management and planning is uh, this, this, this part of a uh, project is to create the reality. I mean, the expedition itself is only uh, it's only two months, but the preparation period is like two years. So if you fail in the preparation, in planning, uh, in equipment, in know-how, uh, you, you, you are not able to reach the summit or to reach the North Pole, South Pole, or to reach the goal. And, uh, and yes, I think that uh, my, 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 yes, the, the many people say that uh, you, ha you have to learn from mistakes. But in my opinion, the life is too short to learn from mistakes. Uh, so it's b the best, the, be the good terror is the b best practice. I mean, if you have a good knowledge about reality, the, the good model of reality, you, you, and there are different realities. There is no, no, there is the, the reality of the um, university is different from the reality of the of the of the journey to North Pole, South Pole, and uh, there is different, I would say, topology. So you have to learn the metrics of the reality that you operate so this yeah different right in the business in 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 the science in the family life uh, so you, uh, uh, in every reality you, you have to know the metrics of this reality but uh, coming back to my expedition uh, in order to prepare to the expedition to the north pole for example i was pulling behind me four tires because there is no snow in Poland, um, and when I met people, I said that my, my car is not far away from here, because this, of course, is a strange uh, view that the guy is pulling uh, four four tires, fire uh, to four tires uh, behind. But uh, in order to prepare to crossing the Arctic Ocean, because uh, I have to cross like 700 kilometers up on the Arctic Ocean, because I start from Canada from uh, World Hunt Island, and this is just the ocean. So the bottom is four kilometers down, and uh, the ice is quite, uh, yes, it's sometimes it's very thin, sometimes there's no ice, because the, this surface breaks and moves, and uh, the winds came and they are drifts, so sometimes it's open water, like even 50 kilometers wide, open water. So this pulling of the tires was only the only way to prepare to prepare the body and uh, body and uh, mind for pulling uh, 150, I don't know, uh, yeah, 150 kilograms or 300 pounds uh, sledges, uh, and in I, this, I have to pull the sledges for like 700 kilometers uh, in the temperature minus 60 degrees Celsius, and uh, with the winds uh, up to. 100 kilometers per hour, with the, snow, uh, the, with, the with the constant danger of polar bears, 
because you have many polar bees in this space and the polar bees attack humans without any warning and uh, if you if you meet polar bees if you meet polar bees is, is the question who we will eat whom for the dinner but uh, yes uh, oh but uh, yes i was able to overcome with, with my friend because we are we were two in the in the on the trip to the north pole i was able to overcome all these uh, dangers and after 72 days of uh, of trekking or uh, 72 days journey this is the hum by the way this is the human being uh, just a couple of days maybe 3 days before the before the north pole and uh, and yes finally uh, we came to the north pole and we, we were the one of the first poles and one of the first in the world without uh, without external support we lose uh, by this journey around uh, 30 kilograms each of us so it's quite a good diet for losing kilograms However, however, we ate every day 7,000 calories. So you can imagine, uh, especially the women that are here, to eat every day 7,000 calories and to, to lose, uh, to lose uh, 30, 30 kilograms. So we more, more and less uh, even eating 7,000 7, calories, we lose uh, every day half kilogram. So the, uh, because of the temperature, like the first month, the, the temperature was minus 60 degrees Celsius, and uh, because of the yes effort and this sledge, 150 kilograms, etc. So from the North Pole, uh, from the North Pole, you can go only south. Um, but uh, and the farthest you can go in this world is the South Pole, actually. So uh, yes, my fr my friend Wojtek he was uh, he was just tired after this trip and exhausting. So this time I went alone I, and I was alone. Uh, I, I had to go 1,400 kilometers, uh, 1,400 kilometers on the highest and coldest continent in the world, uh, where the the the, the, the there was a minimum temperature minus, I think the, the, the yes, the minimum temperature uh, in this in the on, on the Earth minus 89.9 degrees Celsius uh, somewhere here, uh, and uh, the average the average uh, high highness is about uh, 3,000 square 3,000 meters, so is the highest continent in the world and. Uh, also, the, the, they are very strong winds, up to 300 kilometers per hour, and I all I survive all also the wind. I, I think for three days I, I was in the wind with the speed of two, 272 kilometers per hour. And the other, not on this trip, but on the other trip, I use also the uh, the parasail. It's it's a quite big sail, uh, up to the this sail is up to, is maybe. 30 square meters, and with using this sail, you can you can crawl, you can uh, you can maybe cross like uh, up to 150 kilometers per day. So using this 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 parasail, I cross Greenland in in a very yes in very very fast. Like in the 13 days, I I cross six over 600 kilometers and. Uh, after 56 days uh, to be alone, alone and uh, unsupported, I, at the end of the, by by December 26, and at the end of December, I came to the South Pole and I was uh, yes the first man in the world who reached the South Northern South Pole, unsupported, and uh, after this I went with the disabled boy who lost arm and leg in the accident. Uh, he was 13 years old when when he lost arm and leg, and uh, and uh, b b before this this uh, accident, he lost also his brother, uh, who who drowned in the in the lake, and uh, his house was or home was also in the fire. So there were many unlucky things hap happens to to his family and. Uh, 
And finally, we started to think how, how because he is the friend of my friend, so we started to think how to help him. And I think the most valuable thing that you can give in nowadays to the other person is the time, to give the time, because time has no, no value. <laughs> uh, and uh, th there is no, yes, there is no price. You can you, you can not buy the time for any price. So to give the time, it means to share the experience. So I, di I decided to help him by sharing the experience, how to conquer the poles or how to reach the goals. and. Uh, after this accident, we started to think uh, maybe we, we should climb the highest mountain in our, neighbor, in our neighbor, neighborhood, and this is like uh, 300 meters uh, high. 300, yes, 300 meters. But then we started to think maybe we go to Greenland, and finally we thought, well, maybe we go to the North Pole. And after, <laughs> and uh, then we, I was thinking, why not? We should try at least. Uh, is maybe the, the the goal is only the goal is important just to hit the road because the of course it's not possible to reach all the goals in your in your life and uh, to be successful all the time but uh, my yes in my opinion the 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 way is important not the goal so even not reaching the goal but learning from from the road you can uh, Yes, you can help, for example, disabled boy uh, who was hit by 15,000 volts uh, in the power station. So uh, it was quite uh, it was quite a big project uh, because nobody before him went uns went uh, to the without arm and leg unsupported to the uh, went to the without arm and leg to the North Pole. So we have to actually we have to. In um, for sure prepare his body and mind for this journey because uh, yes it was many medical problems so it was the team of the doctors uh, like car cardiologists and uh, psychologists and psych psychiatric uh, and uh, yes many different uh, specialists and experts uh, and athletes for training etc but also we have to invent special prosthesis made from titanium because yes no before this journey nobody uh, went with prosthesis uh, and skis to the north pole and uh, yes finally we were we were able after one and a half years of preparation uh, we were able to to start first to spitsbergen and uh, and then in Spitsbergen, it was uh, quite bad weather, and a friend of mine, who was on another expedition, died. And uh, in this in this bad weather, and even in this in the Svalbard, uh, there was uh, helicopters and technology and ski skidoos and sk uh, snow scooters. There was no technology that could help him. So uh, the meaning of this lesson was that here it was the end of possibility to help us. It was like uh, in Latin words, memento mori, remember about the dead. Because, because uh, um, yes, leaving the Spitsberg and we, we were, um, we, yes, we were without any possibility of, uh, um, of support or help if something happened. So it was really a um, tough project and, uh, and very, very demanding. And uh, I have, met, yes, the responsibility was, uh, it was on my shoulders was quite big. And uh, I tried to, maybe I show you the short movie about uh, this journey. Uh, and, uh, and from the, from the journey and preparations, and maybe, oh, maybe we start the movie. So uh, I think the. The pictures, they say more than my words.
so it was really, yes, I think uh, it was very important pro pro project, uh, not only in Poland and uh, reaching by, by Jasiek Mela, the, the, this young guy, 15 years, well, he, he was 15 years old, uh, reaching the North Pole and South Pole in one year, it was really quite big you know, like social experiment which redefined the possibilities and potential of the disabled people and uh, i think by this by this trip by this project journey expedition yashik mela not only not only came over the the borders of his mind and uh, and uh, and body and not only cross his own own uh, limits, but also uh, he show like example. He was like he is like example for the other people, not only disabled people, people but the people who lost uh, meaning of life or, or who lost uh, uh, hope. Uh, because if the disabled guy, 15 years old, without arm and leg, can reach two poles in one year, it means that uh, the people, uh, the, all the people have uh, even. Uh, with some limits, they only it's the the head which reached the poles, not not the legs. In fact, so uh, yes, it was really amazing uh, to be part of this project, and uh, and I, I think this this project changed the the image and uh, and give the whole, uh, yes the, the image of this of these disabled people and. Uh, and uh, this project gave the hope uh, for the, it was like a strange, uh, strong message all over the world about uh, possibilities of uh, uh, human being or or redefine the limits of the human beings uh, generally. So uh, after this trip, I, I did many other expeditions, but uh, one which, which is very important was it still is very important for me is the the journey from uh, from Russia, Kaliningrad, to Santiago de Compostela. Uh, this is actually I, I am from Gdańsk. I was born here in this city where the Second World War began and the Solidarity Movement. So it's quite uh, I would say I would say the Napole Napoleon, uh, the the French emperor, when he came to Gdańsk, he, he said that uh, the key for the future of the world uh, are in Gdańsk. So it was like a metaphor, but really a lot of uh, like historic events or movements, they, they start in this, uh, in this city in, po in north of Poland. But uh, why I, this is, by the, by the way, this trip is like 4,000 kilometers track from this point to another is like 4,000 kilometers and it's across whole Europe and, uh, <clears throat> and by the way this is old pilgrimage trail so the trail the name of the trail is Camino de Santiago maybe maybe you heard this name because there is many books and movies about uh, this uh, this path and uh, it's, it's old uh, Christian path uh, uh, across Europe, actually the, the most important part is uh, from from here, from Saint Jean Pied de Port in France to Santiago de Compostela. It's 800 kilometers. But uh, I read uh, uh, the, the, there was a very great poet uh, from Germany. His name was Goethe, and he wrote that uh, Europe was created uh, uh, around. Uh, Pilgrimage, pilgrimage. Yes, for sure. In uh, you, if some people are Buddhist or Muslims, that every every religion has his own Mecca or his own path uh, to cross or his own way road to to follow. Uh, so in the Christian world, Camino Santiago is one of these roads, and uh, but it's not only. Um, religion road, but only, uh, even many people from Japan or from Asia, uh, from Korea especially, they, <coughs> they follow this path. And, uh, and because they, this metaphor of Europe was created around pilgrimage, so I started to think uh, when you have uh, the axe, like something is around some, something, so w when you have the axe, like earth has the axe, uh, 
So uh, one and so the axe has two poles, normally two poles. So one of the one of the pole of this axe was uh, the fight because here in Santiago de Compostela this was the grave of uh, Saint Jacques, and uh, the other axe and the other axe it was uh, another grave of a very famous philosopher Immanuel Kant, who I would say who was inspiration for Albert Einstein. To create the, 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 uh, to create modern physics, and uh, this famous e, e, uh, e, uh, MC double. So, I mean, uh, yes. Anyway, the Kant was uh, uh, is in Europe at least symbol of mind, and uh, he even wrote the very famous book. Uh, um, Critic of uh, critic of uh, pure mind, so I I went from the grave of Kant, who is like a pole of the mind, to the to the um, pole of the fight, and uh, this is why the name of this uh, journey was the third pole in in the search of the third pole between mind and fight. <laughs> it's quite complicated, but anyway, it was four months trip and 4,000 kilometers across whole Europe. And uh, to make it very short, I just, uh, I, I came out from this journey with the three words. Uh, and I remember these three words uh, every day, or try to repeat them. These three words are gratitude, acceptance, and mindfulness. And uh, yes, this is, the, these words are very obvious, but uh, the one thing is to know these words and the other is to follow these words or to live with these words. And what is gratitude? The gratitude is like uh, the life is the, the gift. We don't, we, did, we, do, we don't pay for this gift, we just have it for free. Mm, yes, from universal, from our parents. Anyway, we, we yes, it's... Uh, it's a free gift, so uh, it's nice to be grateful because uh, because it is really great that every day you can wake up and uh, do something with your life, and uh, you have a free will and power to do yes a lot of things every day. So this is the the the, the this is nice feeling to be grateful for this possibility and opportunity. And the second thing is uh, acceptance. So I learned this word acceptance because if you go 4,000 kilometers, the road brings you different things. Sometimes it's good, they're good things, sometimes bad. And um, of course you can fight with this. You can not accept like why this happens to me. But, uh, but yes, some, uh, everything is, is for some reason. There is no coincidence in this life. So. It's a good way to to live, to accept the thing and and move forward, not to not to fight uh, with the why because this this consume energy. So it's better use this energy for uh, yes for 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 moving forward, not to complain uh, about the past. And mindfulness is like to be here and now, because uh, normally I I realize that with I don't yes I. Think about, we live in the past or in the future. We always are, our mind is switching because between past and future. Like, what will be in 10, 20 minutes? Why? When this lecture will end? Uh, well, what will be <laughs> when I come to the dinner tonight? Or what will and so and or in the past? Like, it, how wonderful was uh, maybe one hour ago or ten hours or ten days, uh, ten days, ten years uh, before. So if you if you are not present here, which is which is very hard, I, I realize on this trip, it is very hard to be here now. But if you are not present, we can only live now, by now, not by past or be, not not by future. So of course, when we think about the past, we think. If you if we plan the future, we plan. But it's good to be here now because. Uh, if you are not, you lose opportunity. The life brings you a lot of ideas, opportunities, etc. If you if you are not if you are not present with your mind, you you can lose something. So it was, it 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 takes me four, it took me four, ma four months and four thousand kilometers to discover um, important importance uh, of these words, but. Uh, uh, but uh, it's for me. It's like a f uh, now. It's like a fuel for the future projects. And uh, and yes, that now we come to the, the small technological part because, uh, as I 
as I understand that this is the innovative space or sp startup space. So my last project was uh, not about uh, uh, going on the skis, not about uh, walking uh, or be alone, but going with the yes, with the technology, because I realized that uh, when I went to the North Pole and South Pole. I went on the skis and uh, there was no trace after my trip. Uh, I, it was just the trace on the, ski, on the snow and this, this trace disappeared after a couple of minutes or hours with the wind. So I started to think if it's possible to, if it's possible to travel in this mode uh, between the poles and if it's possible to travel without impact on the nature or without uh, without trace, in fact. So this is why the name is uh, No Trace Expedition. It was uh, last year. And, uh, and I started to think, yes, because, I, because exploring is not about only conquering the space or conquering the North Poles or North Pole, South Pole or, or summits. It's about, uh, also exploring is about uh, going beyond the horizon is going is crossing the barriers the barriers in our minds the barriers in so, the barriers the limits uh, in so society the the limits of thinking of uh, mindset so i started to think how to travel how to cross this barrier and how to travel without impact on the nature on the nature and I come to the idea maybe i go to japan with a solar car but there is no solar technology now to uh, that, that which uh, there is no solar technology for the cars. Uh, th there is no that there is no a car cook, uh, which can go to Japan and back. Maybe in Australia for for in some ideal conditions. So I come to the idea that I go with the electric car with zero emission car to the Japan and back. And it was I went to Japan and back. I went uh, across. Uh, Russia, Moscow across Siberia, across Gobi Desert, uh, across China, to across Korea to Japan to Hokkaido, and then I I went back uh, across uh, Vladivostok and uh, Russian Far East. Uh, about yes, and uh, uh, I was following the Trans-Siberian. Highway, and it was, I think, the, fir the first, uh, the first in history crossing of whole Russia in uh, in electric car by this Trans Trans Siberian Highway, which is the the longest road in in the world, 11,000 kilometers. I think this is the longest highway in the world. So uh, many people told me that uh, I. I never come to rush, no, no, never come after Moscow because there is no power station, uh, to, no charging station to charge the car, etc. But uh, using uh, this method that I created uh, uh, by by expedition with Yashik, visualization, planning, etc., I was able to uh, to come to Japan and uh, cover 30,000 zero emission kilometers. Crossed nine countries uh, in 144 days with uh, zero CO2 emission, and uh, I, I would say uh, I charged the car with the willpower, because the, there's yes, there was no charging station. Maybe we can m see the short movie about this trip to Japan and back uh, in 100% electric car.
also it was also it was also very interesting um, like social experiment and uh, and very good uh, yes very good impulse for uh, for uh, people using electric car cars in Poland and uh, over the world that, that yes you can go with uh, uh, zero emission car so far mm. and after this during this trip actually I come to the idea why why not to go around the world but uh, but uh, going around the world just for fun is maybe I went many times around the world for different reasons so uh, and the life is the life is not only to to have a fun so it's nice to have a, some yes to have something behind or to have a impact for the future or to change in some way even in the in this yes small to change small piece of this reality uh, so i started to think about the uh, about the yeah, like uh, which challenge we have to face in the future and uh, by this trip i realized that we as the huma humans or humanity we have to to face challenge or challenges in three dimensions is singularity like artificial intelligence and all the ai and all this yes lectures that are, that are that are over this is the future that we have to face and all the fears with this future and then uh, the second is uh, sustain sustainability and the nature the need, the nature that is d destroyed by us all, um, also and the third is social empowerment. Like yes, because the, with the rise of technology, the, it seems that uh, people has less and less power. That uh, sing, the, like single people. So, uh, and from this, uh, from this thinking, from 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 yes, from this uh, mindset, uh, I come to the to the idea to go with the robot uh, around the world. So yes, like if you have these three three S singularity, sustainability, and social empowerment. So uh, I yes, I write later I explain how it can materialize in in my project. But the main idea is to go. The name of the project is Powerful Change. Like ideas are powerful change uh, for the people, and and doing by uh, action by example. So. Uh, the idea is to go from London to London uh, with the electric car, uh, with the robot, humanoid robot, around the world, and uh, from London to London, because the, there is a famous book of uh, Jules Verne in 80 days around the world. Uh, but it will, uh, maybe I don't know. I I don't want to go in 80 days around the world. It will be slow journey, like slow foot. But it will be interesting because the main uh, main hero of this this uh, this book is Phileas Fogg, uh, mm, and uh, it will be nice to compare. It, the book is was like the action of this book was like 100 years ago. Uh, he will, he has to burn this, the 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 sheep, etc. But it will be really interesting to compare the carbon footprint of Phileas Fogg and my carbon foot for foot from this trip. But I, I start from London, from the sa same club that uh, Phileas Fogg starts. Uh, Mm, it's uh, mm, the name is Reforma Club in London, and then across Europe, t Turkey, mm, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, uh, Pakistan, India. Mm, maybe to, maybe I try to go to Laos and Vietnam, Tibet, Laos, Vietnam, and then China, South Korea, Japan. United States and back to London, and I have to cross uh, with this current, uh, with this robot, uh, two oceans. It's been Pacific Ocean and uh, Atlantic Ocean. Um, yes, this, the pillars of this project is uh, singularity, sustainability, and social empowerment. And uh, for singularity, I have like materialization of singularity is the robot Noah. The name of the robot is Noah. I have this robot. We work with this robot since I, uh, actually we have two robots, <laughs> and uh, we work with this robot, robots in Poland since uh, since April uh, April this year. For sustainability, is the car. It will be probably Nissan, mm, an electric 100% electric car, 
And for social empowerment, we want to make declaration uh, by social med to, through social media to to yes to to make a social action about declaration and uh, changing the habits of the people, like uh, in order to uh, lower the zero, uh, CO2 emission. Uh, like, for example, using uh, declaration to use uh, low emission transport for one month or, to, or not to eat meat or not to use plastic, etc. Uh, but uh, practically, uh, I will go, uh, yes, with the, with the NOAA around the world. And uh, this is this, this robot. Uh, her, her name is NOAA. It's actually very interesting because, uh, like, uh, by creating robot, you can, it's a lot of problems. You can create the per personality. You can choose the personality. If it will be she or who, or it will be he. And uh, how old is she or he? And uh, if he's cynical or ske skeptical or pessimistic or optimistic. So it's many, many, many uh, problems to resolve. And, uh, and also it's very interesting. Uh, how yeah, the task for the robot and uh, and uh, what the robot uh, will do on this trip. So anyway, we want to make from this scientific project, and uh, we think the robot in the future um, can help the hu the humans to overcome the problems that is created by technology, like for example depression or burnout and uh, and uh, losing the, the meaning of life. So we try to develop the special software for the robot and uh, and but by and the ten, and then uh, to make a test on this trip around the world uh, around the world um, in different cultures with different uh, society and people and uh, facing also different problems but the problems are uh, um, there are many problems that are common all over the world like uh, lonely people um, yes, no meaning of life, uh, uh, no f yeah, f fear about the future, fear about the jobs because the jobs will be taken for the, for the, uh, by the robots, for example, or by artificial intelligence. Uh, so th there are many common problems in uh, or China or Russia or maybe Singapore. Uh, and uh, I think this, uh, I forgot the, the the Japanese word is hirok, hiroki. I think the people who are lonely, for example, who who are lonely in the young people, they they just uh, cut off from the world and uh, they stay in the in the in the flat and mm, not go out, for example. But yes, there are many problems. Uh, we are not able, of course, to, to touch even all the problems. But it will be interesting to. Uh, I, I think about this project like about. Uh, uh, I, the, 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 that was a uh, very famous Norwegian explorer, his name was Thor Heyerdahl, and uh, he went with the raft across the Pacific Ocean, and he wanted to prove something about the past. About, uh, he wanted to prove that the people to Polynesia, they come from South, Af South America by raft. And he, he called it, he, he, he gave this, the name what, what, for this exploration, he called it uh, Experimental archaeology. So, if you can make uh, experimental archaeology, it means you can make also experimental futurology. So, you can make experiments about the future now. So, this journey is like, uh, ex and uh, there is a very famous Polish uh, Polish writer, uh, Stanisław Lem. Uh, he he wrote he wrote many science science fiction books, uh, and he was really like a prophet and. Uh, but yes, uh, so uh, I think uh, the idea of this journey comes from his book, uh, his, his books, and uh, and uh, I would say he would agree that that this kind of journey you you can call experimental futurology. So the task for a robot uh, that that she because her name is Noah, she will perform will be collecting the data for about the declaration for power for change project and uh, she will also produce the final report about about uh, co2 emission and uh, carbon footprint she will post uh, she will make a blog uh, she will report the journey on the social media and uh, 
she will perform with me on the lectures and meetings and uh, yes she will be like a travel companion in fact uh, and also, I, I think that she can write, write a book about this project in the future. Uh, now we are developing the software with a, some, with a uh, company from Poland, a software company, and with the people from Shenzhen also, from China, and uh, with, uh, with some friends from uh, Silicon Valley. And uh, also with the Facebook, we, we, we make a social action with uh, collecting the, the declaration about changing uh, about changing the habits uh, and uh, about uh, yes uh, about lo lowering the co2 emissions and this is uh, mission and the goals uh, so the mission is res response to the challenges facing uh, that we really face in the future it's in the singularity, sustainability, and social empowerment, identifying opportunities and the threats, and finding the concrete solution for the future, but achieving four goals in this area: reduction the fear of the report and conclusion from the coexistence coexistence of man of and artificial intelligence, uh, and uh, also we want to reach maybe 50, 50 million people with this project uh, with the social media and uh, create, create by this project this robot for life, robot therapies, who will help to overcome civilization diseases. And by this uh, social, action, we, social action, we want to ed reduce the one million tons of CO2. Uh, it's, we are now working on this. It's just uh, only working uh, data. Uh, finally, I will start on the first of... Uh, First of May, and uh, uh, yes, and we are still. This is still work on, in progress, and we also we want to collect 10 million declaration uh, that change the habits for the for the future, and uh, maybe we will also work with uh, cryptocurrency and uh, try to co create power for change coin that will be used for for a future. Uh, for the uh, for the future uh, mm, so initiative initiatives in this uh, 3s uh, area and uh, also maybe we uh, probably we will, s we will uh, keep all the data in the blockchain so that all the data from the project will be available uh, all over the world and uh, yes we also for we, we want to to go to to make social uh, mm, campaign for the active people who, who care about environment and uh, environmental damage, damage. And uh, this is short description of the of the concept that uh, more or less that what I said before. Uh, this is project archi architecture. In short, like uh, the pillars. It's singularity, it's sustainability, and social empowerment. Uh, the materialization in the project is not the robot for these pillars: the electric, electric car and declaration, uh, declarations. And the key project dimensions is, is like relation, partnership, human, and uh, artificial intelligence in the future. Uh, for sustainability is intelligence, intelligent mobility that can save the nature and uh, by declaration we want the change and uh, abil human ability to change. And this is the like uh, powerful change expedition with the robot and social campaign with declaration and eventually the coin and uh, this is how we want to how we want to perform this project in media and, and conferences. And uh, this is uh, how it will work by application. And, uh, and eventually, we, if, we, if, we are re if we are ready with the coin, then uh, with the coin. And uh, this is the marketing strategy for the project. And uh, equipment and technology will be 
yes, the smart, smart intelligent car, uh, nano clothes, uh, a different, we, we still work, we are still working on this uh, no trace equipment uh, for the expedition. And, uh, and yes, yeah, this is more or less resu results that uh, we try to achieve, but this is only, as I said, working data. We are still, uh, still, still in, in process of work on the project. So this, yes, this is more technical data about the project. But uh, by the way, this is just la the last uh, technical slide about what, uh, why this is uh, from North Pole and South Pole to artificial intelligence. Because all this knowledge about the human beings that I, that I took from on the North Pole, South Pole, and in, in extreme expeditions, I, now I am using for future and for like a good, uh, for a good change or for good for all the people. And uh, we are starting with this powerful change method that I created by the, by the project with Jacek Mela and with, uh, with uh, for by, the, by this period of preparation uh, for North Pole and South Pole. And from this method, uh, we created the life plan. This is one one year scholarship uh, program for children in Poland. And in the future, we, we, make it, we want to make it also in India, Japan, and Bangladesh. By the way, in Japan, there is a 20 people, 20% 20, 20 of the ch children, they, they, they live under the, in a very poor condition. Uh, and uh, then we are now developing with the, uh, uh, Polish Ministry of Health uh, life plan uh, application. Uh, this is application who can help people to overcome uh, depression, uh, burnout, and uh, uh, some mental diseases. And yes, this is the powerful change pro uh, uh, expedition and campaign. So thank you for attention. Uh, yeah, that 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 that. It's more or less my way from the North Pole to South Pole to artificial intelligence. It's, yes, almost one hour, yeah? So now if you have any question about, yes, this, this way from the North Pole and South Pole, from the, very, from the very far ends of the world to the problems that we face now and in the future, I, I am ready to, of course, to answer. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. So thank you very much for the sharing. I think it's a very amazing life experience you had. I'm just curious that what is your background and what has inspired you to have such initiative? And also beyond the expedition that you actually caused to this technology world as well. I say again, last two so my question is that what inspire you to take yeah. the expedition to the North and South Pole? Yes. And the second one is that you actually go further, be, you know, beyond just pure sports, right? Adventure sports to go to the technology world. So what is the inspiration behind yes. that? Yes. So my background is philosophy. I am philosopher from from I I I I'm graduated from Warsaw University, in the department of philosophy, and I also study physics. So this is my background, philosophy and physics. And, uh, mm, and also I am an entrepreneur because I, I, uh, I was studying in a, um, ES, this is the um, business, business university in Europe, like London School of Business uh, or, uh, so my background is also the business. But, uh, and I also create, I'm an entrepreneur, so I created the company and the company is still running and successful. So, uh, mm, 
what inspired me, as I said at the beginning, the words. I think, the, the, I think that the, the world is created by words in every religion, or, or you, uh, the, the, the world is created by words. And um, even uh, now, nowadays, everything, the software is the words, everything is power of the words. So uh, the words, the, the, the books inspired me. The books, yes. But I was also inspired by the failure. I mean, uh, as a child, I, I have a very, I have an accident and uh, I almost l lost my arm and I had to spend a uh, long time in the hospital. So th that was the time when I, I was five years old and I started to read the books. So the books created my imagination and, did, did, and this is very funny because uh, when I was 10 years old, I, in my imagination, I went to the North Pole, South Pole, across the deserts, etc. And then after this, I was just only following this plan. So I, everything I invented when I was, uh, uh, and when I was 15 years, when I was 10 years old, even when I was, uh, I was, I remember that I, I was asking by uh, some doctor what I would, what would be the best invention for me. And I said that um, it would be, it would be nice to invent a machine that can read human thoughts, the thoughts of our brain. And now I, I realize because I'm now working on the robots and we are working with the people from Tokyo, from Japan. And uh, one of the part of this project is reading the emotion of the people that the robot can read the emotions. But the next step will be reading the thoughts because the thoughts are uh, waves. Are, yes, you, the waves are very thin, but still maybe in the future we can read them. So th I think my childhood inspired me. Everything, I was uh, very, because of this accident, I was very, mm, I was not looking for outside world, I was looking for the inside world. So I found that the, that everything is inside, that we are somehow connected, uh, that inside is infinity. So we are connected and uh, if you can lose the time if you only look outside for inspiration. So I always, uh, since childhood, I always look inside. And how it, it comes to this uh, technology, etc. Because, you know, when you study philosophy, the question is more important than the answer. Because the question, uh, this, the question, the answer are only temporary. The question are for yes, for yes, they are forever. The question remain, and the answer did change. I think the Robert, uh, Albert Einstein said uh, the people asked him, "You are not boring when when you have to answer the same question all the time," and he said, he answered, uh, "No, because." Uh, because uh, the because the the question are the same and the, and the, but the answer change the correct answer change so yeah it's a little bit complicated but uh, that the philosophy teach me to to give to ask the question and uh, and so it doesn't matter if you use technology or not. It's the, the question is matter and how we solve the how to answer the question. And if you answer, if your answer is by going 4,000 kilometers, and uh, or going with the electric car, it's just the detail. <laughs> it's just technical details, nothing more. So this this is my like inspiration. The question and yeah, connection. Try. try trying to be connected. So I meditate every day, like short time at least, and, and I practice yoga also. <laughs> yoga is good. <laughs> um, are there Thank any you. other questions for Mr. Kaminski? Oh. Hi, thank you. Um, I just have very small, three small questions. Yes. <laughs> but probably big answers. Uh, uh, the first is about your first expedition to the North, North Pole. Um, what I personally have been thinking about civilization and nature, and I just wanted your opinion on 
when you made this trip, what philosophical insights did you get about being in nature and then returning back to civilization? Yes. And uh, second condition was, how did you tackle the bears? <laughs> and, and thirdly, uh, this robot that you'll be making your journey with, will you be taking it into harsh weather conditions? That's it. Thank you. Okay, thank you for the question. So the, uh, the first question was, yes, the, the, the North Pole trip. So the North Pole trip was amazing. It was, it was like the like trip to the moon because it's so different reality and uh, and uh, <clears throat> and I understood by by this uh, trip uh, it's uh, yes very hard to say because uh, you are two months in a very hard condition and you can lose life every day but you are happy every day you are happy and uh, I think because this is this pure nature very pure nature and uh, we are the water we are like 90 percent of the water and there is water in the other form very basic form and uh, everything is energy so you you, you receive I, I think i receive a, a lot of energy from, from the nature about this trip so this is why i was able to finish this trip and uh, and it, it gives me the trip to the north pole was as uh, connected to power bank for <laughs> next 50 years of life so it will it will be very hard for me to explain how close i was to the nature but uh, for example you know it's people they know 100 words for the snow 100 words for different f so there is a very famous uh, philosopher ludwig wittgenstein and he's he wrote that uh, the uh, the the frontiers, the borders of my language as, are borders of my world. And uh, this was very important for me, this sentence. So, th in fact, we are thinking in the language. And, uh, and the, how, this is the question, how the language is created. And, but this is a very interesting question, that the Inuits, they, they, they deal with the snow. So they have 100 uh, different words for snow. And we have only like snow and ice. So this was very interesting that we have to invent the 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 words for that because in our language it was not possible to describe this reality. So um, um, I understood that uh, the nature is so powerful and so rich, and only we make it pure with our imagination and language because, uh, in fact, uh, the planets they were created from ice. The planets, Earth and other planets, they are created from the ice in the space. Uh, from you can read, probably read it from the physics, and uh, and so in the ice you can really discover everything. And when I was when I was looking in the ice, in a different form of ice, for 60 days, I was discovering everything in the ice. So this was really a big lesson. But uh, I wrote the book, uh, My Pose, where, where I, there is a diary and, uh, because it's really hard to explain this, but it was anyway, like power, yes, charging for next 50 years, <laughs> going to the North Pole and South Pole. And the second question was about, uh, about uh, bears, polar bears, yeah, yeah. This is funny, yeah, because, uh, this is funny because, uh, I when I, w I was in the jungle in uh, in 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 Mexico in the, in the Gu near Guatemala, and I I faced two jaguars. They were like one meter for, from maybe a half, one and a half meter, and they can they can eat me very easily. I, I was yes, I was almost di di I almost die. But on the trip to the North Pole, I never meet the polar bear. Never, never. <laughs> <laughs> but of course, I have a, I have a fire, I have a gun, and it was the, the many tracks of polar bears, and uh, but sometimes I heard the polar bears. They they are very close because you can, hear, but never never face to face. So maybe if you make the jaguars, it's like jaguars. In, they are jaguars. Very, when you meet the jaguars, you don't meet the polar bears. <laughs> and uh, so yes, it was funny. The uh, polar bears I only m met in the in the zoo. <laughs> But uh, I hope, yes, I think 
it's better that yeah because to me polar bees really is really not yes to to be alone on the ice mm. actually i was working in svalbard without a gun and uh, many people die in svalbard by eating they, they were the the they were killed by by polar bees so the polar bees are really very dangerous and uh, many people uh, yeah many explorers or many Many, many people was killed by polar bears, so it's really not. Uh, uh, yes, I'm very grateful to, to destiny, to destiny that that uh, yeah, we have not to meet face to face. But uh, the third question, uh, the Noah and the harsh weather. Mm. The robots are very fragile, in fact, and uh, you have to be careful with the weather, but. For sure, on the on the way around the world, uh, we face bad weather also. So somehow we have to prepare robot for uh, for harsh weather. But the weather probably the 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 weather yes. More interesting is Wi-Fi. <laughs> In fact, access to Wi-Fi because the the we will work a lot with the. Uh, iCloud uh, with the with the with the cloud and uh, mm, yes, it will be interesting how to access the the Wi-Fi. But yes, well, yes, the, there's um, there's a, that could be a problem when something happens to robot. How how will continue etc. How I will continue etc. But we try to make our best not to yeah. Uh. Please. First, can I, if I have a micro? Yeah. So if you are a philosopher, I have to ask uh, one question for yes. every, important for the philosopher. What's the meaning of your life or a life? Yes. Have you ever answered this question? Yes, I try to sometimes to, to, to cope with this question. And uh, 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 yes, there is many answers for this question, in fact. and. Uh, the the simple answer is if you if you change uh, the the life of one person for better there is a good there is a good life so so for me i think most important is like uh, yes how 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 you can help other people because um, when i i forget to tell you when i was when i went to the north pole to the south pole the second trip uh after the North Pole, I try to combine this trip with uh, some helping for 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 other people, and there was a very very small hospital in Gdańsk, in my city, the, for the uh, children, uh, for the children with oncological oncological diseases, and uh, somehow we combined my trip with uh, the trip for the, so this, these children. They went in the. In, by internet, by pictures, with me to the South Pole, and uh, on, the, on the South Pole in the Polar Station, I received the letters from the children, and uh, I started to cry because uh, it was more important these letters from the children than even reaching the South Pole, and uh, for, by myself as the person. So uh, I. Mm, I realized that uh, that yes, because for the more than half more than half of these children die, they die died after one in the period of one year after this expedition. So for for more than half of them, it was the first and last trip in in, in life. So from since the, this time, I started to think about this impact for at helping other people. And yes, I think that. The, the simple answer: If you can help one person, you 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 change the world. It's worth to do something. It's worth to have a, this life. So yeah, <laughs> and I don't try to to look further for this question. But sometimes, of course, I I am thinking about yeah different answers. And uh, mm, but uh, yes, I left philosophy to live the real life. So maybe in the future, when I have the time, I, I come back to this question. <laughs> <laughs> I think the meaning of the life is real life. 
thank you very much for the very exciting lecture. So, uh, since he asked a philosophical question, I will ask a physics question. Since you've been to both the pole, uh, did you feel the change of gravity? Because uh, uh, every second, magnetic field is changing, and uh, gravitational change is actually experienced by quite a number of pilots currently. So, what is your feeling uh, when you are there? Did you actually experience it? Uh, both in the north and in the south. Thank you. I um, I don't I didn't think about the gravity, but for sure I uh, I have uh, like extraordinary experience, um, and uh, the real experience was about uh, not about gravity, uh, about but about this about the time, the time ex because uh, it it is. Uh, Mm, yes, yeah. mm, it is not uh, scientific. Uh, mm, how to say? Sen it's, it is not scientific fact. I cannot prove it. But uh, when I went across Greenland, I have uh, I, like I, I saw the future. I I was. It was my first polar trip across Greenland, and suddenly the images come to me that I will go alone to the South Pole. And I say to myself, this is funny, why should I go to the South Pole alone? I, I, I don't think about the South Pole at all. And it was really very strange, I even wrote it in the diary. And uh, so I just like, have, a, like, I have an insight of my life in the future, in a very short, in one moment, I just saw it. And then the other thing, when I was in Antarctic, uh, I was like, uh, for one or two hours in the past, but I was completely like to be back in the past. I was really there. And it was very strange. It was like, uh, yes, everything, it was, it was not memories. It was, it was being there for two hours. I was just in the, some um, classroom in, in, the, in the primary school for two hours. And it was really, uh, yeah, so I have this kind of experience. I would say this, this was experience about the time. So it was like the time is, uh, is all the same. I mean, is everything is present, the past and future. Uh, so th that was, uh, by ex it was like experience. It's not, yeah, experience about the future. And, and then, of course, you have uh, diff other different experience. Because I, I, when I was studying philosophy, I, w I was, um, dealing with logic and mathematics. I was not uh, uh, only dreaming and not only speculating. Uh, I was, yeah, I was trying to be uh, very on the ground. So yes, you have this, I would say, the, the, I, now I, when I think about this experience, I think the, uh, the, if everything is energy, and every, every, so the North Pole and South Pole, because it's this un, untouched nature, nature, it's a lot of energy. So maybe you can, you can have this impact on your body or, or brain or whatever for the rest of the life. I think about this in these categories. But about gravity, no, I, did, I didn't feel it. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I just, yes. 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 Yeah, I think the North Pole now is somewhere in the Pacific Ocean and the, and South Pole because they are opposite. The magnetic poles are the, is magnetic South Pole is in Canada, I think. Yeah. 
this is unknown known, <laughs> Sometimes, something that I have to study in the future. Because experience is one thing, and, uh, and, and then to know, to know it, it's, it's another thing. So still unknown known. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, hi, so upstairs you have a very young crowd listening to you with ages starting from five. And we were carefully listening, so when you were traveling to the north and south pole, you said you've, you, you had to deliver 7,000 calories each day. Yes. Which equals to about 14 chocolates every day. And we have a very important question to ask you. And the question was, how did you brush your teeth? How did you brush your teeth? Yeah, the brushing, this is funny because, uh, because you, have to, you have to think about every gram, every gram, every single gram when you, when you carry this for two months. So my, my, uh, uh, so I br yes, uh, I brush my tea with the uh, with uh, th th I have the water for I can melt the water. So I yes, I brush my tea every day. <laughs> anyway, but uh, but I the, the but What's but. Good? I, uh, but I didn't, uh, I didn't uh, wash my, my body for two months. I don't have a shower, I don't, I don't, yes. I was just uh, in the same, almost the same clothes and uh, no, no shower, no washing hands, no washing face, nothing, just, yes. It's very, very funny because you are not dirty after 72 days because it's so clean environment. <laughs> but in, the, in between the poles, I, I, I take a shower every day. <laughs> but on the poles, it was, yes, very, very funny. No shower for 72 days. And uh, still clean. Yes, I was still clean. One last question. But, uh, but this is a very important question about brushing the teeth. Because uh, I, I come back to this. Because think about this, that uh, we, are, we are taking so much care about our skin and, uh, and teeth and uh, hair. And, uh, and uh, this is only surface, but it's a lot of things inside. They are also dirty, and also the mind can be dirty. So it's very important if you put, if we put so much attention and so many things in the in the shop, uh, soaps and hundred hundred different uh, shampoo and uh, one thousand oil for the skin. Think about the inside and about your brain. You cannot buy any, almost anything for cleaning this. <laughs> Thank you very much. So actually my last question is about the, the inside because we brought our kids here to drag some inspiration from you. And because yes. we, are, we are from Poland and we are really proud of you. Yes. Uh, so what is the inspiration you can l give to our kids? Mm, inspiration. I think, yes, it, I think it's nice to read books. Uh, this is, but, uh, mm, yes, I think, I think uh, that it's very important to be yourself in, in the life, not to be, not to copy, not to be something, because uh, the world is saying to you that you should be this or this, or the teacher and parents, so, this is very important to find your own way. So this, and to look inside. This, uh, try to follow the intuition. I think that this is my inspiration that I can give. Try to follow the intuition. And, uh, and there is a very nice book that, uh, there is many books that inspired me, but uh, uh, like a Bible, for example, and uh, many other books. But one book that, that I'm always coming back to this book is, uh, 
the book uh, from Antoine, Suc uh, Antoine Su uh, saint Exupéry. This is the uh, author of Small Prince, but he wrote also another book. The name of the book is Citadel, uh, uh, the Fortress. This is a very strange book, a little bit strange. And, uh, but uh, you can really, uh, this, this book is very good inspiration for life, The Fortress. Well, thank you very much, Marek. Um, thank you. Thank you. Um, Marek is uh, available for networking, and we've got some beer as well uh, at the back table, Polish beer, so feel free to yeah, spend some time with Marek with the beer. Just one, well, just, uh, one last word. That you can follow my expedition in, uh, by uh, in fa Facebook or Instagram, Marek Kaminski Explorer. And, uh, mm, and you can write me also by Marek at Kaminski.pl. But uh, uh, my, my, uh, my wish for you is like uh, follow your own poles, not, not ge geographical ones, but that, the poles that you have in your mind and your head. Thank you very much.